first time I met Big, I was actually about six or seven, and I was on my way to school. So I was going to public school. He was right here on, um, on Fulton Street, which is the block over. We're on St. James right now. And I was on my way to school, and I was like, uh, I said, what's up to him? And he was like, uh, what you doing? I said, I'm on my way to school. I was like, let me get a dollar or something. Give me some candy when I get in school. He gave me like $2. And that was like my first, uh, that was my, my first birth introduction of a B.I.G. We had a party at this place called the Paul Robeson Theater, um, right here in Clinton Hills. That was the first time I heard him rap. He did a freestyle over the mic at the party, and that was it. And a lot of times we'd go in the one room shack. His room was way in the back, this bright yellow room. And we were just sitting there. We had the big Menunga speakers in there. We were just sitting there and just smoke, blast it real loud. He was just sitting there and write rhymes in there. And that's when everybody started to come around the way and start checking for him. Uh, Jazz O, um, Buster. Everybody wanted to hear about this kid, this fat kid from St. James that be getting busy. Big was already creating that buzz, so everybody from all the neighborhoods was coming down here. The game wasn't what it was then, you know what I mean? We were still living in the hood after you had a record deal, you know what I mean? So we was all out here just chilling, but we all were just keeping it tight. And we were just, this was like that stoop to come hang out at. Big was here, and if it was that days, we would go right around the corner to the chicken spot. See that soul place right there? That should be the weed spot. And I don't know if you, you ever saw that, um, the picture with Big rolling the dice? That was the liquor store he was in front of? It's a pharmacy now. See, the hood changed a little bit, but certain things don't change about the neighborhood. Gotta keep you some good fried chicken. If you want to eat something outside while you're sitting out here doing your thing, you get you a two-piece chicken. If you won't get messy, get you some mashed potatoes, you get you a biscuit, and you get you a Welch's grape. You good money out here on Fulton Street. That was the order. I'm gonna have to get me that shit too right now because I ain't eat all day. We just left the chicken spot, $2 chicken, crown fried. Now I'm about to take you out to Come Cows. It's like one of the best Chinese food restaurant spots out here. Every time Faith come here, she requests that. And it's like a, it's an old spot. We've been going there for years. Best Chinese food ever. The building right there, that's this building called 500. And um, that's another hangout spot we used to hang out at, but that's actually where Big Baby Mother Jan. That's a building right there. Like a lot of our homeboys and our homegirls came from that building right here. 500 Washington, shout out to Tiana and Jan too, it's my peoples. When we first got our money and got our deal situation, we had our office right here. Of course we wanted to get outside the neighborhood, get to a different spot so we could be quiet, be cool, so everybody would be rolling up on us and you know be a little professional. We had our office building right in there. I think it was on the, uh, the fourth floor. Of course, we terrorized that place, smoked in the hallways, drunk liquor in there, harassed everybody in the building. You know, we was young, 13, 14 year olds. They didn't know how to act, but that's the building right there. It's a well-known Chinese restaurant, man. If you ever in Brooklyn or you from the Star, East New York, Flatbush, Clinton Hills, Fort Greene, everybody know about Come Cows. Mm -hmm. Every time Faith come up here, it's mandatory that we get her big pans of fried rice and chicken wings from here. Like we would just order big pans of food just to bring it for the whole team to eat when we're in the studio working long hours. We'll just take all that to go. We just took y'all on the whole tour through Brooklyn, but through our part of Brooklyn, for the spots we used to hang out at. I showed y'all Come Cows, we was on Biggie Stoop. I took y'all to the fried chicken spot on Fulton Street. Now we're about to go to the city and go to Daddy's house, man, the studio, where all them hits was created at. Right now, we're on, the, we're on the A train right now. You know, you get off in Clinton, Washington, we take this to 42nd Street where we was going to Daddy's house. And before Daddy's house, we used to go to Soundtrack Studios. It's times we here, hop out the car. Like, come on, see, come on, so get on the train real quick. No security, no nothing, just me and him, we get on the train and just ride. We getting off the train, there's about 40, 50 people getting off the train with you. He loved that shit, like, you'll see certain flicks, you'll just see a bunch of people walking behind him. That's when he just hopped out the car and just started walking up Fulton Street. He just, he just liked it to be real. He just wanted to be a humble dude. He just liked to just, he never let the shit get to his head. He didn't want that. He knew when he was at a certain time when Big Papa came out like, all right, I'm a star. Like, he knew that. But I think he still just wanted to just be cool and still maintain and be real with the people. Like, all right, yeah, I'm a star, but I ain't too good to do this shit. And then we used to have problems with some time where if something go on in the city, we used to have to go and get the guns and get shit like that. We used to have to get on the train. We will put them in the shoe box, put it in the sneaker box, and sit it right here, and we'll go take that trip. Wherever we had to go. When Tupac was to be up here, 
I still had to go take him. I still had to go take him pistols up here to make sure he was safe in Brooklyn. We at Daddy's house right now, the uh, the B room. Damn. First thing I think about when I'm in the studio, I think about the Jaws of Branson. <laughs> this when you, you know, you made it. This was uh, when we were smoking that good exotic shit. This is when you come in here, this was just where you, you know, you get that vibe. And every time you came in the studio, it was always people here. It wasn't just us. You go in one room, it's Craig Mack is in one room. Uh, go in this room, Faith is in that room. Go in that room, Toto is in the mini room. It, it would just always work here. Like, you ever, you know, you, whenever you came in Daddy's house, you know it was time to work. It was less bullshitting and creating. Like, he just ain't, he ain't think he was gonna be that. None of us did. You know, back in them days, we just like, yo, if you go go, you happy. You know what I'm saying? He sold six million records. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, even to this day, it's still, it's still selling more. I can't even tell you where it's at now, but when he was alive, he was at five million records sold and ready to die. And we was in the house talking about, yo, if we go go, man, we be all right. And you know, those are all the steps to showing you like, all right, he's about to be successful. I mean, when, when you hear your album leaked out six months before it come out, it's like, okay, they really, they really want this dude.